This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Okay, so we've got a nuisance service call, not a nuisance, but we've got a pain in the ass service call that's been kicking our butt. I had another tech out here. Um, they keep complaining that their freezer's not working. They're complaining that one side's half-ass working and then the other side isn't. This is my supply air temps coming out the freezer. The left coil is 18 degrees, the right coil is 35 degrees. They have the same box temp. Fan motors are all working. We're gonna check one more thing. We're gonna make sure that the defrost heater is not stuck on, which I don't think it is. Um, after we check that, then that means that we got a bad TXV. If we've got one coil blowing out 17 degree air, one coil blowing out 35 degrees air, obviously we're not working. And the box temp in general right now is 35 degrees because I just defrosted coils and everything. So I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna look inside and we'll see what it looks like. Here's our coils. And this one just isn't blowing as cold. So I have a return air sensor sensing at 40 degrees or 35 degrees. The left coil is getting cold, the right coil is not. But my TXV is frosting up, so. You more than likely have a bad power head on the expansion valve, but you're not gonna get in there and change that power head. It's just gonna be easier to change the whole valve real quick. So tight in here, I can't sand it before to sand it after. These guys make these damn bags so tight. I can't get any tips for that reason. sweat. Now we gotta get it out. They didn't have a low temp. The C charge is medium temp, but because it's the same refrigerant, we can swap the power head out to a low temp power head, which is gonna be the Z charge, SZ. So we're just gonna swap the power heads out. Push that guy on. I'm gonna have to heat it up. Cause it ain't gonna push on without heating it up. Push it on, put a braze on there. Push this on. Bend it out. Push that in. We need to get that on right now. Cool. Push that on now. Gonna be tight. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be tight. It's not fun. It's not a fun breeze joint at all. Mm -hmm. 
See, I can't get to the other side of the well. It's totally blind. And I'm going to be lucky if it takes. So I need to turn up my heat. Yeah, because it's got to heat up the whole 3 8 line. Hopefully I don't melt the defrost heater. I literally can only get one corner of that thing brazed or heated. That was an awkward. Not very awkward. I'm holding too red. I don't know what that was. I'm not looking for a raise this quick. <laughs> Hey, that was a very, very crappy situation there. We took man, that is a messy, messy weld, but it took our braze joint for all you. We're all brazing, please. Okay, ugly is, you know what, but it's functional. Change the power head. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's take the vacuum pump up with us. This right here, uh, some nylog in the back of my bag. I knew there was a reason I used flare dryers because now I didn't have to bring my torches up here. So, so we're just going to undo this nut right here. You got it. You got it. There you go. And we'll take it off. And I'll do the same thing right here. So the side glass isn't a pivot point, it's a solid nut, so you gotta take off the outside too first. You got it, it's just a little more difficult. Good job. Okay. Sweat or twist the new dryer on. So we're gonna use the slightest bit of nylog, that's more than enough. And just just right there, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. And then go ahead and twist your sight glass on there. Remember, you want the arrow pointing towards your sight glass. Good luck getting them to match up. Meaning the writing and the arrow with the, it just never matches up right. Okay, so you got that. Now use leverage to tighten it. You want to go about, I don't know, 60 degrees. So give yourself some more leverage, use that, yeah, that one up there, turn it, nope, there you go, just like that, there you are. There you go. Get it to the point where you can do it with one hand and it'll go a little bit tighter. 
that's a little far. So twist this wrench around. There you go. There you are. Cool, that's good. Okay. Dryer's in the right direction, yep. So now we're gonna put some lube right here. Back just a little bit, because right where the nut's gonna go. There you go, right there. Just a goober, that's fine, a little bit more. A nice little goober on there. You gotta open it. There you go, plenty. Okay, now bring the nut on and spin it. And all you're doing is lubing the surface. See how the nut pulled the stuff on there? That's what you want. You wanna see that, you want it to be lubricated. Okay, you don't want it to go in the fitting, but you want it to be just in this area right here. Put just the tiniest bit on the threads. The cool thing about Nylog is it's refrigeration oil, so if it gets in the system, it's no biggie. That's perfect, just the slightest bit. And then go ahead and thread that on finger tight. Let's do the same on the other side. About not so far in because we had a little bit too much. About right there, that's good. Okay, so we're just gonna thread this on. All right, good, nice and good, hold on. Pull it back, all right, we're good. Slightest bit on the threads, right there. Just gonna help so we don't get any too much friction that's gonna stop this thing from tightening down. You just finger tight. Before you uh, wrench on these, you wanna one more time double check to make sure the dryer's in the right direction, and it is pointing towards the expansion valve. Because this one has a cover on it, it's difficult to see the sight glass, so you want the sight glass straight, so that way you can see it from over here with the cover on, okay? If, if it didn't have a cover, then I would say point it up so you can see it while you're working on it, okay? But this one, we're gonna put it right there. So you're gonna compress right here and right here. About 60 degree turn. Should be using a, a torque wrench, but like I told you, my elbow clicks when it's the right torque setting. And if you over tighten a flare nut, it'll back itself off two days later. So get another twist on that. Go ahead and turn, there you go. It's about right, no more than that, okay? Same thing over here. Just a little bit more. That's right, right there. A little more tighter than that. Okay, so what I need is 5 sixteenths and I gotta get this other sensing bulb off and then cut. So I will need the 10 snips if you wanna hand me those. And I'm gonna to try to get this out if I can. These Omni temp coils, there's something to be said about how tight they are. Oh, they go in Yeah, they're up top above my head. Let me see those tin snips. All right, sensing bulb. The old one's not coming out. Okay. It's gonna stay. And TXV is in a nightmare place. Okay, so what we're gonna do is wind this bulb up really tight and put it down below.
Okay. So let's get this one mounted. Can you see anything, John? Oh yeah, you can see everything. You can see what, no, I'm saying, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, I can okay. see it on your camera. Okay, so I'm tightening the sensing bulb on. It's tight, there's no good way about this, and we're just gonna have to route it through the front of the coil, which is not good, but it's a potential leak that way. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just find a spot where we can bend the fins run it down through them it is not a good situation this is only a temporary because they are changing this box completely and there's no room to mount this thing i hate omni temp for this reason and that is going to be a leak spot it's going to rub that sensing bulb out but you can only do so much It's got to run like that. I don't like it at all. Yeah. It's a really crappy situation. It's something that you have to do. Yeah, it's just, sometimes I've drilled holes in the side of the coil and come out and in, but there's just no room on the side. So it's just a crappy situation. And it's gonna leak, it's gonna rub out. But, yeah. you know, right, again, right. this is only temporary. They're changing this box in two months. Oh, okay. Notice how the fan came on right away? Someone disconnected the fan delay. It's missing completely. Pull this valve apart. More than likely I'm thinking the power head was going bad. But let's see if there's anything internally wrong with it. Don't see any problems there. The pins look fine. No damage to the pins. Not that there would be any. Dirty. But nothing's plugged up internally and the spring's fine so let's pull the strainer out I'm not a fan of strainers in these tiny valves you can see light right through the strainer so strainer was fine internal ports on the valve don't look damaged there's nothing stuck in it so it's more than likely just the power head going bad Normally you can change that, but on this one it was so tight in there you couldn't change it. So my performance is a lot better. I still got a little bit of a discrepancy between supply air, but it's huge. So much, much better. I honestly, um, the, the left side coil, which is T2, that's the one I didn't change a valve on. That one has got a, um, uh, a valve that's overfeeding, I believe. Okay, so that's supply air and I just opened and closed the door. That's why you see the discrepancy. Um, it's about uh, 18 degrees in the box right now, so we're doing really good. Uh, what I ended up doing was found that this valve on the left side was out of adjustment, so I put it back to the mid, mid position where it comes from the factory, and we have the valve on that one, so this should solve the problems. But I'm gonna leave this work order open and call back and follow up with the customer. We cannot always be perfect. You know, you, you have to do your best with what you have in certain situations. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I would have loved to have just changed the power head on that expansion valve. In a perfect world, I would have loved to have been able to get a heat compound in there and protect the new valve as I was uh, brazing it in. But there's, there's good in theory and there's what works when you're in the field. And sometimes you can't do all the fancy stuff, okay? So I had to do my best and braze that valve without any protection, heat protection on it. I couldn't put a towel on there. There wasn't enough room. I couldn't put heat compound on there because it was hard enough just to get the valve in where it goes, okay? You know, it's sometimes you just have to make a decision and, and do what you got to do to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in that situation, we vacuumed the system down after we changed the dryer. We opened up because it was a pump down system. So we opened up the king valve on the receiver, let the refrigerant fly and everything was good. Now, I didn't really get it on film, but I kind of mentioned it a little bit on startup um, that that valve that I changed was on the right side evaporator coil. And this was a freezer system. OK, now on the left side coil, I was still getting some really wonky readings 
And what I found was that something that valve was way out of adjustment on the left side too. Someone had been wrenching on it when they shouldn't have. Okay. Most of you really shouldn't have to adjust an expansion valve on a 404 system unless the valve is oversized or something like that. I mean, if you're adjusting on it, something's going on there. All right. Um, but anyways, so what I did was I pulled the, the stem on the valve, backed it all the way out. Okay. Cause it was like way out of adjustment, backed it all the way out. And then I screwed it all the way back in, but I counted the turns. Okay. So, you know, let's just say I got 50 turns out of it. Okay. Whatever it was. So then what I did was I screwed it all the way in and I got 50 turns. Well, then I backed it out half of that 25 turns and I put that valve back in the middle position. That's where it comes from the factory typically. Okay. Most of the time there's not really, it's usually in the mid position. So, um, then everything kind of stabilized out and my temperatures started to calm down and they evened out on between the left and the right coil on something like this. There's really no way to get in there and check the superheat. Okay. And this is another thing that you got to do what you got to do. There's no superheat ports on those coils. And even if there was, how are you going to get in there to get on a port? Like you got to put the cover on it. This is one of the things that you have to learn how to deal with when you work on reach ins when you're working in restaurants. Okay. Um, you know, you typically don't get to start checking superheat and adjusting valves that way. If you feel like the valve's not feeding right, then you just have to make an adjustment and kind of see what happens. You could always look at compressor superheat on the roof, but on a little reach in freezer, the insulation is completely destroyed on that thing going, you know, all the way up to the roof. So it's just one of those things. You just got to kind of learn how to deal with this stuff. You got to use, you know, your knowledge and your skills and just kind of your, your senses and evaluate what's up. You know, uh, temperature probes go a long way, and that's why we use the air temperature check. You know, I wouldn't usually tell you to, to check air temperature on a walk-in freezer to see if the coils were, you know, because you can get in there and check the valve via the superheat. But on something like this, you got to rely on that, you know, temperature sensor to, to tell you, you know, and you, you use two coils and you assume that they should both be blown about the same temperature, being that they're, you know, 12 inches apart. So anyways, what I'm getting at is, is sometimes you have to do what you got to do to get these things working. Okay. Um, I followed up with the customer. It's been like three weeks since we did that repair. Everything's bitching on that box. Now it's working good. All right. Really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Leave me some feedback down in the comments. Tell me what you think. Okay. Let me know if you think I'm a hack. I don't care. Just, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like to know how you guys deal with things out in the field. At least you guys that are experienced and they're working. I mean, sometimes I feel like you just got to do what you got to do to get them running. So let me know what you think, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one, okay? Thanks so much for watching.